Los Angeles, I'm Brad Lamack. Inside the business of acting with Emmy Award winner, Jack K. Harry, my pal, thank you for being here. Segment three about stuff that uh, I think nuts and bolts for actors. We're talking about stuff that we hope will, if you are an actor, you're on the road to becoming an actor, will help empower you on your career journey. I wrote a book called The Business of Acting, and that's meant to move you along. There's resources available at thebusinessofacting.com, but more about that later, my darling. <laughs> the audition process has changed I I enormously, and, and for, for actors who are working now or were and will be again, and actors who are just entering the process, what do you wish that you knew about this before that you've come <laughs> to now? <laughs> that would be I'd helpful. like to know how they pick the people for the job. Oh, let me tell you, I'm still an actor. I, uh, but one thing I've learned, and this is a very valuable les lesson. I learned it from Debbie, Debbie Morgan. When you finish your audition, let it go. Once you leave the premises, don't go. Because I've, I've got I've wept for losing jobs. But it's been e economics. And it's been artistry. So it does, it's, if you really think you're supposed to get it and you feel bad about it, go ahead. But don't dwell on it at all. It's best when you walk out of the audition, throw the piece of paper with, uh, and go. Leave it alone because you can make yourself sick wondering if you got the job. But it's an anxiety-ridden business. It's a, it's a very lonely, crazy business. You're slightly schizophrenic because you want so much, you want so much. Certain jobs you don't care about. Well, I guess everybody does, but not me. I, because I, I know, one thing I have is a gift, is when I look at the part, I know just what they want. I know, and I know it ain't how me. Do you, how, so how do you do that? What's, what's Because the of the way it reads. 40 like, to 60, uh, big, brazen, so-and-so. That ain't me. But it's me. It's my personality. But visually, I'm not that anymore. I used to be. You know, I, um, I've lost weight, and, and that's another thing. They want a certain, they want Queen Latifah. They want a certain type of non-sexual creature and um, unfortunately I'm still sexual. I don't know what happened. I, I tried not to be but it's just there. We have some video surveillance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean though. Yeah. They want uh, somebody who will not bleed that, that sort of, of, of image. So you just th try to be the everyman. Things like that. You go in the audition process. You should know if you are the type or not but you don't know. You know, but sometimes you do, so you don't beat yourself up. So how does this work for you with, um, you have an agent and a manager, or one or the other? Yes. You both. Yes, and everybody doesn't need it. Yes, you do. Right. So I you, thought I didn't. Yes, you do. Yeah. You, you need a manager more than an agent, in why a was that? Why was that true for you? Um, I, don't, I don't know what happened. I fired my manager the first time, and I was like, oh, I don't need to put out that extra, you know, 10%. And it's like, oh, I think I lasted two days. They're there for you to throw stuff up against them. They're a sounding board. You're paying somebody to help you shape your career. But that's for people, you, it's for young people, it's for old, it's for older. You need somebody to look at you and talk about you when you are not. You can't do it yourself. It comes off vain, it comes off egotistical. You can't meet all that many people in a day because you're looking for work. You can't meet that and sit those hours like a manager can and prod you up and push you up and feel things. They hear things and they can overhear it and write it down and get into it without you even knowing about it and come to you. You need help. That's what they do. Now, they may not get you the job, but they'll get you the interest eventually. And you got to be good. You got to offer something. Like, I do notice a trend that these kids are getting. I'm having a big, um, it's another book <laughs> I'd love to write. Why Aren't Women As Funny? And um, Tina Fey talks about it at length. You know, there was an article in Vanity Fair. Uh, we can't because it's politically incorrect. But I'm funny as hell. You know who else? Joan Rivers used to be funny, remember? Toady Fields. I mean, we had some wonderful comedians, but you can't do certain jokes anymore because of sexual harassment. And it's true. We do. I don't know. We've got to find another way to be funny, you know, without cursing even. And, and, and without being sexually, you know, offensive. Because some people are funny now. Like, Wanda Sykes is hilarious. But come on. It's still not har har like. Will, Will Farrell can come out. I start laughing before I even... You know, it's a visual, and men yeah. can be visually funny and not work up the, but women can't do that because it's just certain things we can't do anymore, you know? Yeah. But I, so, I wonder about that. So, so you 
rely on the um, agent to get, make the submission, get the job, and negotiate the deal, right? And then the manager's there to kind of advise and... Con and no, the and they get the... rock in many ways. Managers meet other people who have jobs going. Like she, my manager, she's met uh, the reality show kings, Mark Burnett, this and that, and they throw stuff out there. Well, let's do this, oh, which is very important now. That's a whole other thing you must do on another day with why are reality shows so popular and they will remain. Remember, we thought they'd go away? No. Why do you think? I don't know, but I do know that I enjoy watching certain ones. Aha, uh -huh, that's why. I watched, <laughs> clean, I watched Clean This House this morning with that yeah. niece. I, I couldn't turn it away because... I got clutter in my house like everybody else, and even though they have the cameras and everything, they show me what to do, and I got some tips. And did you do anything with it? Yes, I'm going to. Aha, but you have, all right. But they showed Report me how. That. I want to get okay. rid of some of my stuff, but, I, you, know, I'm, you know, when you're famous and trying to sell stuff, you can't do it the same way, so. No, you cannot. You can't have a, by the way, speaking of yard sales, <laughs> you're a yard sales person, right? I love yard sales. <laughs> Uh, how do I know that? <laughs> I have my spies everywhere. But I like good ones. I don't do. You do Beverly Hills. I like estate sales. You got to get there early. Yeah. I got to sleep there. <laughs> Puff that car. Ooh, what time is it? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were we talking guys, about? That's not the business of acting. <laughs> but the audition part, yes, I rely on things I hear. But when you get to a certain level, you'll hear them automatically. I mean, I have. I've been very fortunate that way. But lately, the problem that's arising is because of the strike, the post-strike, everybody's available. And afraid. Yes. I went to an audition. It was me, Leah Thompson, Cheryl, uh, from Twin Peaks. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Major, Conchetta Faro, Rosario Dawes. I mean, come on. I mean, huge. And you kind of go, I've never been to an audition like that. You see A-listers everywhere, just, and they're available. And they're taking uh, cuts in pay. And they're doing a uh, schlock. <laughs> There's a lot of schlock out here. And you're right, and the strike's coming up. So what you, you're seeing, but it won't last long. I am very hopeful, and I feel very positive, that, they, that it will get back on its feet towards the end of the year and into the next. Because there's no pilot Absolutely. season. Just be, be available. Everybody should be available, because they're going to start jumping off. And if you're talented, you're going to work. And another, that's some more advice. If you're talented, you're going to work. You know, and they say it's not enough. It is. Yeah. It's a lot, but you got to be disciplined, too. You can't just have it and go out and party, and you got to be on your, on your game. Well, it's a, it has to, I think, be a, a significant balance between um, talent that you bring, right, and skills you develop to help you survive. Oh, that's what I was getting to. The, the, thing, the kind of comedy that women are doing now, it's all Jenna Fisher, it's all The Office, it's all droll and doer and quirky. Somebody's got to be funny. Step up to the plate and, and, and be that. Don't try to emulate and imitate who you think is funny. I just saw this movie with um, uh, the guy, uh, oh, I don't know his name, there's two of them. He plays a Russian comedian. He steals their movie. Uh, yeah. It just came out. Kristen Bell. Does anybody know that? It just came I, out. I, I, she something. It's supposed to be about, oh, Sarah Marshall. Is that oh, oh, Forget the, the, Sarah Marshall. Yes, some, yes. That guy's hilarious. He steals the movie, the funny, funny. guy. Yeah. He steals the movie. The women, they yeah. fade. And, and, you know, I got mad because service the, the girls. They could be funny. She was, because his other knocked up, hilarious. Funny, it's, yeah, yeah. You know, Judd Apto. It's like, come yeah. on. You know, so step up to the plate. Don't, sh don't shirk back and don't try to emulate somebody because one thing about Jenna Fisher and all the rest of them, that is them. It's funny and it works for them. It can't work for you. Don't try to do quirky. You have to either be that or what, you know, but they, they've got this whole thing they're trying to do to get jobs. You know, they're trying to be, it's like you can't be Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston, I don't even know. She's she can't still evolving. Even be yeah, right. She can't she's even. evolving. Right. She's a better actress than she, right. you know, she just, but she's see, not doing it now. Yeah. For me, anyway. But there's a, there is that fear factor, I think. Yes, you know, There's a terror. lot of actors who are almost afraid of getting the job because then they're going to be called on the carpet. You've got to deliver. You know, there's giving a good yes. audition, right? And then there's being able to yes. do the work. Yes. I don't have that fear, though. No, Thank God. <laughs> no, I don't. I never have. I'm not afraid. I don't, but, you know, I'm not afraid. But you know what it is? You have, um, you have confidence, which, Gotta. again, a lot of actors who may be very talented still don't have the confidence that they need to walk into the room the first two seconds in the audition process, which is when really most of the decision is being made, 
capture and captivate the other That's people. That's very important what you just said. The very first two, two to three minutes, you're absolutely right. And it's like, don't do a lot of talking. Don't, don't do a lot of whatever. It doesn't make any difference. They, they know instinctively. And then sometimes they get it wrong. You're right. Sometimes they do. And they know it. And thankfully, sometimes they get it right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And lately, they're not getting it right. I don't know what's going on. These movies, everything just incredibly yeah. not. But it's anyway, that's it's the state of, yeah. But that's the thing. Know what kind of character you want to be when you go in the audition. And stick with it. Don't switch up just because, unless you get a light bulb. So I've had some light bulb moments. I'll sit there, you know. But oh. never change because you're in the waiting room and you see something. The type. Uh, yeah, you're Because now when I go, I see everybody I make know. Make your commitment right. Make it oh, I see every. I was up against a Lysol lady. And as soon as I see them, I know they're going to get the job. I'm <laughs> right every time. But the I'm a Lysol good, lady. But I'm a good <laughs> casting person. Yeah. I can see, yeah. 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 You know, but that's based on fame, too. Yeah. Which is a whole nother, uh, it's like, like how I'll tell you. It, when you're famous, it's a whole nother ball game. We're going to talk about that, actually, with regard to how that, plays um, in opening doors to opportunities. I mean, a lot of actors get in the business because this is what they feel they must do. And, um, well, things happen. We'll talk about that because we're going to come back for segment four. And you'll stick around, right? Yes. Yes, just for one, just for one more. You said four. Yes, I did. So, and I'm a person of my word. I'm over here. I got marked up. <laughs> Inside the business of acting, with Jack K. Harry. I'm Brad Lamackey in Los Angeles. We're coming back for segment four. We'll see you then.